Right. And that's that is so true that we um that we we get so caught up in in chasing the money when when we uh, chasing it is the reason why we don't have it. But um when we do what we need to do and put our stuff uh, our mindsets in the right places, you know, change your mind, change your life, plug in for her book right there, um, then we'll be in the right position. Um, and I'm, I'm going to shift gears slightly really quick because I have a real good question. I want to get your opinion on this. You dropped two names of two books that I've read. So my question for you is when it comes to Dave Ramsey and Robert Kiyosaki, two, two people that have great outlooks on the financial industry, yet there's such a divide in their principles on things. Um, and I've noticed, uh, as you said, some people really start off with the Ramsey and then they eventually go to the Robert Kiyosaki. Um, what is your take on that? So because that happened to me, <laughs> I was a hardcore Dave Ramsey. I mean, Maurice can tell you I was a hardcore Dave Ramsey uh, person. And I agree with all his principles because he will help you get out of debt. He, re- he, he has so many great principles. However, once I crossed over and started listening to other people, I'm, I'm not as risky as Robert Kiyosaki because he is a risk taker. He don't mind. He'll, he'll just jump out there and be like, hey, let's just go and do it. I take out a little bit from everybody, if that makes sense. I have several people. I listen to Jim Rohn. I listen to Daryl Hardy. I listen to different ple- people that have different concepts. But what I like about Robert Kiyosaki, Dave started me off as paying his debt off. Uh, making sure I'm doing uh, what I need to do, making sure I'm following these principles that's going to get me out of debt, keep me out of debt, all this other stuff. But then once I start paying a lot of the debt off, I say, now what? Because I have extra money. The biggest take, a lot of people, they'll say, I need this and that because this is the value of it. But that's not the true value of it. And one it, one thing he pointed out was real estate investing, right? But, you know, he's big on real estate investing. And one of the things he talks about was a lot of people, they will panic during the market market crash. Even when it comes to stocks, they'll panic, right? I get excited. Like right now, I am waiting for Tesla to just tank. I need Tesla to go to like $2 a share. I'm going to speak it because that's what I need for Tesla to do. I need for Tesla to go to like $2 a share and I'm going to buy all I can because I know when it goes back up, I'm going to make all that money on top of it. But one of the things he said about it was he doesn't care what the real estate market is doing. And at first I thought he was crazy. I'm not going to lie. But then I thought about it. I'm like, what do you mean by that? But he said, no matter what the real estate market is doing, it doesn't affect him. Why? Because his value is within his property. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, okay, break that down. His asset was a true asset. Because the biggest thing was his house was an asset, whether the market was up or down. Why? Because he had renters. Mm-hmm. And no matter if his the, the, the uh, value of his house dropped $100,000, it doesn't matter because it matter what the renter thinks. If the renter continues to live there and continue to pay their rent, eventually right. their house will get paid off. And look, you got to think about the, the, the passive income that he has coming in every month from that rent. It doesn't matter what the house is worth because he don't plan on selling it. He has that house for rental income. So think about the house being paid off and he still collects rent. He still collects rent. He still collects rent. And I now have that that same philosophy. My wasn't one of my businesses that people don't really know much about. It's called Allura. It's a real estate investing company. And I bought my first property this year, and I was so excited, right? And wow. I realized I, I follow that concept: monopoly. Right. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. That's what I'm focusing on right now because I'm like, if I get this house, it doesn't matter if the the, the gonna put money in my pocket. It's gonna continue to pay me over and over money in my pocket. It's gonna continue to pay me over and over and over again, whether I'm working or not. I don't have to work because that money is gonna constantly come in. But I look at the the big picture because I'm a big picture thinker, right? Right. Once the house is paid off, that's all passive income. Yeah. All the passive income comes into, into my. I don't have to do anything. I can. I literally just collect the passive income because it will continue to just roll in, roll in, roll in. That's why I'm a four greenhouses, one red hotel type person. Let me break that down a little bit more for y'all. Look, and I'm giving you this nugget for free. I don't normally get this away for free, but I'm going to give it to y'all for free, right? Uh, let me, let me. Stop trying to buy these $200,000 houses, especially if you're doing it for real estate. And you want to do it for real estate investing. Buy smaller houses or buy flips. Buy a house been beaten down or is not in foreclosure or you bought it at a tax sale. Buy it and then build it up and then rent it out. And if you do that, that residual income will come in. Let's just say that you, when the money you put in here, 
the renter has paid that house off. So the next year that they're there, now all that is passive income that's coming into your account. That's where you want to be. You don't want to work so hard. Uh, that's one of my, my, my biggest heartbreaks right now. So many people work so hard and they're working 14, 15, 16 hours a day, breaking their backs and they still are behind and they don't know how they're going to get there. Actually, I'm so excited because I'm getting ready to do a financial seminar at my church. Right. And I'm excited for the people who are at retirement age or about to be at retirement age and are they making certain money. I'm going to show them how you could take what you have. It doesn't matter what you did before. It doesn't matter if you didn't invest before. It doesn't matter who surpassed you. None of that matters. What matters is what you do right now. So if you start investing right now in the right things in the right ways, because I'm a common sense investor, right? If you start investing in the right things in the right ways right now, you will build your income and it will surpass what you would have made in a 401k. Do you know that? Some people, they're like, oh, yeah, I got 200,000 in a 401k. Do you realize that if you just buy the right stocks, buy the right options, buy the right real estate, that you can you can make 200,000 in a year instead of waiting 40 years to make 200,000 in your 401k? It's possible. It's just a matter of how hard you want to work. I mean, what I mean, sometimes working hard is, 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 is looking at the charts, looking at certain stocks, looking at certain, because it's other ways to invest besides just stocks. You can invest in businesses. You can invest in yourself. You can invest in knowledge. It's so many things that you can invest in to make money off of. But I really want people to embrace the fact that you're not defeated. Do it small. I have this one guy that lives next to my mom, right? And I have been asking him for years and I'm going to continue to ask him. He got this house. It was a nice little house, three bedroom, two baths, a little piece of land on it. Seven thousand dollars is how, how much the house costs. Right. I was overseas. I didn't have an opportunity to buy it because I was home. I would have bought that. He will not sell it to me. And I'm telling you, I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> I'm like, dude, just sell me the house. He's like, no, I'm going to do something with it. I'm going to keep trying because I want properties like that. Mm. Imagine me paying $7,000 for a property, y'all. You know how long it's going to take me to pay that off? I'm not going to pay it off somebody else's. So other people's money, OPM. <laughs> I know the old song, like you down with OPP. No, I'm down with OPM. Other people's money. Like I'm down with other people's money. Now, I would rather use somebody else's money in order to use my own. I'm going to give you this little tip right here. And it's a little off subject, but not really. Do you realize, and I know Mari's going to attest to this, do you realize that at a bank, if something happens to your debit card and, you know, unfortunately somebody steals money out your account, whatever, the bank will be like, oh, I'm sorry that happened to you. We'll work hard as we can to get it back, blah, blah, blah. But most of the time, that money gone. Unless they can find a way to refund it back and they see that it's legit, that you didn't do it, blah, blah, blah. But let it be a credit card. 